Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Not all superheroes have super immune systems, and even they are susceptible to getting ill. In fact, some viruses are created specifically to target superpowered groups, and there are some superheroes who never recover from their illness, instead being forced to cope with it for their entire existence. Infinite because comics, so no one ever really dies. Or very rarely does that manage to happen. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at some of these supers affected by illnesses as we count down the top 10 superheroes infected with a virus. And be sure to stick around till the end of this list where I'll have some bonus content coming your way. All right, let's get counting. Number 10, Shazam. Shazam finds himself infected by dark metal, which turns him insane following a run-in with the Batman Who Laughs in the miniseries Infected. This took place during the year of the villain, and the Batman Who Laughs would go on to infect a few others as well. It's not specifically a virus, but exposure to the dark metal definitely has side effects and makes those who are not from the dark multiverse but are infected with it ill in a certain way. In its own way, really. With Billy, the dark metal made him angsty and made him rebel against the gods, feeling as though they were simply manipulating people into behaving the way they wanted them to, forcing others to conform. Shazam also went by King Shazam while he was corrupted and had a more monstrous appearance as well. Gray skin, sharper looking teeth, and bright glowing eyes made his face look skeleton-like beneath the dark red hood that he wore. True facts. Number nine, Batman. There isn't much that gets around Bruce Wayne's meticulous contingency plans, but apparently Batman doesn't ever really expect to get sick. Injured? Sure. Almost dead or seemingly dead? Yeah, sure. But sick? Nope. What's referred to as the Phase 1 virus in the manslaughter story arc from Batgirl and Birds of Prey catches Bruce off guard, leaving Catwoman to have no choice but to team up with Birds of Prey to save him. She ends up joining the team immediately after discovering that all of the men of Gotham are at risk, which causes her to immediately think of and worry about Bruce. Rushing to him, she ends up taking a sample of blood from him so that the female supers and the villains who are working together can learn more about the virus and hopefully create an antidote. Fingers crossed. Get to work, Ivy. I love how Bruce is also like, oh my gosh, Ivy's working on it. It must be dire. Number eight, Hank Pym. The hunger virus ends up taking over many of the Avengers, including Hank Pym's Ant-Man and his partner Janet Van Dyne's The Wasp. Before it is time to fully take hold of Hank though, and he is fully zombified, he manages to use the last bit of his time as he feels the hunger taking over to convince his longtime friend, Black Panther, to follow him. Just as T'Challa realizes something is off and that his friend may have been infected, Hank knocks him out, proving that he is maybe one of the most cold Avengers. He ties up T'Challa and begins to slowly dismember him keeping him alive and secret, even from Janet, so that he can feed off his friend's fresh meat. Ah, uh, what are friends for, right? But to eat? However, Janet does eventually find out that Hank has Black Panther sort of tied up, and it leads the two to fight over Black Panther's tasty body, and ultimately allow T'Challa to escape following their feud. Whew, thank goodness. Although, you know, he missing some limbs, but he's still good. Number seven, Wonder Woman. When the anti-life equation took over the people of Earth, Wonder Woman found herself infected by it as well. She was zapped out of all of her will as a result. The anti-life equation basically is a formula that convinces those who are exposed that there is no meaning to life life, resulting in them becoming super depressed. Once freed from the effects of the virus, however, Wonder Woman was able to work to free the entire planet of Earth from the anti-life equation and Darkseid's hold when she managed to bind Darkseid using her lasso of truth. Just gonna rein him in and save the world, no big deal. Number six, magic. Ilyana actually died as a result of contracting the virus known as the Legacy Virus. There have been a few different evolutions of this virus over the years, but magic is known for being one of its first victims, if not the first victim in regards to those who died from exposure to it. This was after Ilyana had been reset to a younger version of herself, making her death even more tragic as she was a child at the time. After her death though, she would later be resurrected by Belasco, so don't worry, she got better. But before any of that happened, she was greatly mourned by her brother Colossus, who actually sacrificed himself activating the legacy virus in order to save everyone from the threat of it. And by it, of course, I mean the legacy virus. 
Didn't want to say that again. Said it too many times. Legacy virus, legacy virus, legacy virus. Number five, the Justice League. When Brother Eye ends up working to control humanity in an effort to complete the task that it was created for, it begins to transform organic life, human life, into technology via a virus of its own creation. This virus ends up infecting not just one member, but the entirety of the Justice League, turning them all into cybernetic versions of themselves, complete with Brother Eye's symbol covering or being swapped out for their own heroic symbols, such as Superman's S. True facts. I feel like I already said that, but I said it again. True facts, true facts. These are all true facts. In fantasy world, in a comic book. Number four, She-Hulk. Almost no one was immune to the hunger virus from the Marvel Zombies universe, including She-Hulk. Jennifer Walters as She-Hulk was answering an emergency call at the Avengers Mansion when she was turned into a zombie. It turned out that the whole thing apparently was a ploy used by already zombified supers to get some fresh meat. It worked, and in the end, She-Hulk returned as a zombie. At some point, her hunger drove her to break into the Baxter building, which I assume she stole the codes for from her Fantastic Four days. Once in the Baxter building, she found that Franklin and Valeria Richards had been uh, left there by their parents, who assumed the building's security system would of course keep them safe. She devoured them and as a result was later found by the invisible woman, Sue Storm, who was so distraught that she used her powers to blow up zombie Jen's head. Just what a way to go. That's what you get for, for eating those children. Shouldn't have eaten the, the kids. Bad choice. Number three, Nightwing. When Patient Zero and her daughters of Gotham targeted the male population of Gotham in the story arc Manslaughter from Batgirl and the Birds of Prey, that included the male superheroes as well, and not just Bruce Wayne was targeted. Their plan was to get rid of all of the men of Gotham. Patient Zero, through her years working in medical care, had come to the conclusion that men were to blame for all the death, crime, and war in the world. Wow, that's a pretty heavy thing to put on them. To her, they were a virus that needed to be wiped out. Nightwing himself, who was infected with the male targeting virus known as Phase 1, was visited visited by Huntress, who brought him some ice cream and took a sample of his blood, when the cause of the virus was still unknown, before we knew about Patient Zero. During this cute interaction between the sometimes couple, we also randomly learned that mint chocolate chip is Dick Grayson's favorite flavor of ice cream. So if you're a fan, you might want to write that down, just in case you ever meet him. Number 2. Speedy Not Roy Harper's Speedy, Mia Dearden's Speedy. I decided to put Mia so high up on this list because she is known for having a real-world virus, HIV. Mia is believed to have become HIV positive as a result of sexual abuse that she suffered during her childhood, before she was saved by Green Arrow. While we may have the legacy virus in the Marvel Universe, which in one iteration could be seen as a metaphor for AIDS, it is still very rare that we actually see HIV positive superheroes in the comic book world. Like real HIV positive superheroes. What makes Mia's diagnosis even more meaningful is the way her fellow superheroes react to the news. They have questions, but do not treat Mia with fear, assuring her they are not afraid of her and are still going to be there for her, as her colleagues and her friends. A powerful and inspiring message that conveys the way that those infected should really be treated. Like, you shouldn't be scared of people just because they're HIV positive. That's pretty it's messed up. Number one, Cable. Cable is probably one of the most famous superheroes affected by a virus. When he was little, Apocalypse captured and infected him with the strain of the techno-organic virus. There have actually been many different strains of this virus that we've run into through the history of Marvel Comics. This strain works to turn Cable's body completely into technology, and it's an extremely painful process that is only held off and dramatically slowed due to Nathan Summers' insanely powerful telepathic and telekinetic abilities. In fact, this is the reason why Cable himself never appears to be as powerful as he is known for being in the comics. His efforts are often put towards preventing the virus from completely taking over his body. Would it be so bad though if he was completely transformed? Well, his eye and arm, after all, do increase his power level in their own way. But yes, this actually would be bad. We've seen in alternate realities what could happen if it did fully take over his body. It could kill him, or it could reduce him to being just a giant technological face, just a big old head-shaped technological monstrosity. So I don't think he'd be down for that. Thank you so much for watching, Nerd Squad. I hope you enjoyed this list. What do you think some of the most devastating viral infections within the world of supers have been? Were there any times you were worried a super who got sick wasn't gonna make it? What do you think some of the best cures have been in regards to comic book illnesses? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it's time to turn to a comment from one of our latest videos, Top 10 Superheroes Who Hooked Up With Civilians. Frag it all comments, Daredevil and Karen. I honestly was surprised Daredevil wasn't on this list. Ah, well, she died anyway. Oddly enough, most of Daredevil's lovers have a way of ending up dead, whether they are civilians or superpowered beings. He's definitely a dangerous one to date. 
You'll likely die or you'll just go insane. Though, at least in the end, you'll be able to use your death as a means for vengeance. That's why there is so much of a feud between him and Bullseye, because Bullseye's killed a lot of his girlfriends. And that's all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment below to have your thoughts shouted out in a future video. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. You stay nerdy, YouTube.